Hi, I'm Shafwe Luko from Venom, and you're listening to Cynic Radio. You're listening to the Cynic Radio Podcast. Now, your hosts, Igri and Cynic. And you are listening to the Cynic Radio Podcast, and I'm your host, Cynic. And on this very special edition of the show, I sit down and have a great chat with the star of both Venom and Black Panther, the very talented Chopoy Alugo, joins me. So like, listen, subscribe. Most importantly, go see Venom in theaters now. So the phrase citizen of the world is a term that gets tossed around a lot. But you, my dear, are definitely a citizen of the world. Born in Nigeria and then raised in the U.K., your background is basically one of living everywhere. And is it true that you speak four languages? Yes, correct. Um, I actually was yes, born in Nigeria. I, I did most of my schooling in the UK, but I also traveled and lived in different countries because my father was a, a diplomat. So we got to travel with him. Um, so, yeah, I was very, very lucky to have that kind of a upbringing. And I just think it shaped my life in being able to understand people from different cultures and and just be a little bit more multicultural about my, my surroundings, which is where we are today. Yeah, the world really has gotten smaller. So the fact that you've lived just about everywhere, and I, I'm, my guess is, is that your plot is to live everywhere in the world. Because uh, I, when I talked to your representative, they said you lived in Miami and San Diego. I was like, she really wants to be everywhere at once. And I, I'm actually, you know, I'm married 21 years and I, I've got two sons, I'm one in high school and one still in um, middle school. And, and I made the decision because, you know, I, I would rather fly back and forth for now anyway and, and have them have a little bit of sanity and, you know, um, some stability in their life. So uh, I do go back and forth from L.A. to Miami. But, yeah, my family's in Miami for now. Well, so far throughout the course of your life, where's been the favorite place you have lived so far? You know, I, I would probably say um, Trinidad and Tobago. And, and, and it's not because it's in terms of, you know, uh, the feel, the look, et cetera. But it's really about, the, you know, my point in my life. I was, I was young and I was learning new things. I was learning about wanting to be an actor. And, uh, and there was a lot going on from that creativity. Um, so I think it's more about the experiences I was living um, at that point in my life. And that just lends itself to the environment as well. Um, so, yeah. Uh, but all of the places I've lived in, I have absolutely loved and all been very special to me. I love being in L.A. Um, I love the weather here. <laughs> I, I, and and, oh, and yeah. actually, in some, in, in some instances, it reminds me of Trinidad because of the mountainous regions. And I, I could never get tired of looking at these mountains here. It's just it's so picturesque. And, and the skies are just wonderful and clear and blue. And I just think, oh, wow, this is such a beautiful creation. Yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah, I went. I went out to the West Coast for about a week. I'd say a year ago, and uh, by the time it was time to leave, I was kind of plotting and, and scheming on how to stay there longer. You know, how can I relocate out here? You know, should I sell plasma? My maybe a body part. You found your love of acting at a young age, but then you faced resistance from your family, going to school and getting your master's degree in marketing. But the acting bug was too strong. Tell me what drug you back. Um, well, you know, it just ne- never leaves you. I think, and I, I feel other actors maybe have the same thing. Where it's, well, maybe it's just me, but uh, it never left me. I know my parents wanted me to have the stability. Um, and, you know, it wasn't that they were totally gung ho against acting. They just wanted to have the best for me so that I, uh, I would have a stable income and, and career. And so I, you know, I did it. I was an undergraduate engineer, actually. I studied engineering for four years and then um, went on to do uh, my master's in art and marketing and product management and became um, a brand manager essentially in marketing and, and worked in corporate America for uh, quite a few years. Uh, and I just, every single year, I would just always say, hey, the money is great in corporate, but I just couldn't let it go. And I would always do classes still. And nobody knew this. I just did it quietly, uh, including my husband. <laughs> nobody knew I was taking these classes. I would just always, it was my outlet. 
to just um, vicariously live in this world that my alternative universe is what, probably what I was thinking. Um, and then one day I just decided, you know, it's time. Uh, and, and that was really spurred on by, you know, the passing on of both of my parents back to back. And I just thought, you know, life is just so, uh, you know, it's so precious. And, you know, if I never try, I would be very, uh, what, what would that say about me? Um, and so I just said, you know what, you got to try. you got to give it a chance. Well, as a parent and as someone who went through the struggle and, and followed your dreams, would your advice be to all budding young actors, never give up on your dreams, but have a backup plan? Oh, yes. I, I say that. And I'm still learning the business. Uh, it, it's show business and there's a lot to learn. And I believe everybody's path is different, you know, and I, I will never take away from the fact that I had my experiences in life because I think it'll every path makes you a better actor and my experiences have, you know, even from corporate America and I use that in certain roles, etc. cetera. Um, but I always say to people, don't just, you know, just go gung ho for the dream. Make sure you've got a good sound education. Um, because you need to understand the contracts that you're signing. You need to understand the business that you're in. You need to be a professional. You need to understand, you know, all facets of the business, both behind the scenes and on set, et cetera. Uh, and in order to do that, you need to have some kind of like um, a good uh, educational background and foundation. Um, so, yeah, absolutely. That's the first thing I tell people. Uh, get Get a backup plan or at least at the very least get something that can support you. As you as you chase your dream, yeah, you have to keep the lights on. I believe Jeremy Runner uh, built houses before he made it big, and then he still does today. So it, it's always a good idea to have something to fall back on, and uh, you know, while you're waiting for that next big thing to happen. I was just saying that it, not just you know um, in terms of um, finance and, and managing, but also just other outlets, other other uh, other kind of hobbies as well, because this, this is a little crazy sometimes, you know, when you're waiting for, you know, the next thing or whatever, you just got to find something, whether it's your family or friends or, you know, church or support group, something you need to, you need to have an, a, a, something to carry you through the rough times. You've done a lot of great work on both the big and the small screen at this point. But during my research, I always find one thing in somebody's career I become obsessed with. And that thing with you was your acting on America's Most Wanted back in 2002. Could you tell me how that came about? Oh my gosh, that was so funny. Yeah. Um, okay, so uh, the casting director in, in Florida, she she was she was doing a lot of America's Most Wanted. And I remember just, you know, auditioning a couple of times or whatever. Um, and then this one came through. And, and I just, you know, I'm a Christian and I, and I believe things come through for a certain reason. And this story was so um it was just so, it so impacted me you know uh, what had happened and um i went to the audition and um i i decided to do it the character was a lesbian and uh and in, in, uh, and i hadn't played that before certainly not on film um obviously i hadn't had no problems doing that but i i just you know people come into your ear like oh do you really want to do that do you want to? i'm like i'm an actor and this is a story and we need to find the guy who did all this to this family. Uh, and so I really, really wanted the role just to make sure that I, and that's one of the reasons why I'm an actor, because I, you know, use, I think we use this platform for us to um, be able to tell the stories that would impact and shape people's lives and, and also give a voice to the voiceless. And that's, that's what I went into that project thinking. And luckily I went into that project, um, you know, in the audition for that role. I was a Haitian role, it had to, you know, speak uh, or have a Creole accent, which I do because I'm living in Miami. I have a number of Haitian friends and I was able to get the role. So I was very excited about that and just being part of the whole franchise as well. Um, it was very exciting. It was very, very exciting. It looked at, did, do you know if they ever caught the guy that you did the story about? Uh, I, they, I believe they did. Yes, they did catch him. And I was, that, that's, that's what I love about it, being able to follow up um, afterwards. Uh, and it's so sad that we don't have that um, franchise anymore, but, you know, we have other forms, but reenactment. But, yeah, they did catch him um, and because they told the story so well. And it was, to me, that, that is exactly the reason why I wanted to do it. And um, I'm so grateful that that happened. And it's such a unique thing, too, because I don't know how many actors' careers launched from that, but it's it's a really unique thing to have on your resume. I mean, it could be a throwaway scenario, but you could tell even back then that you definitely could act. According to IMDb, you've been active since about 2009, and in the nine years, you've had 36 different roles on their their website. 
What's your secret to staying so active? Oh my gosh. Um, I, I have to say, be honest, it's my faith and God, honestly. Um, I, I literally pinch myself every time and, and think to myself, really? This is what I've done in this time. And it, it goes back to what I said earlier when I said I stepped out in faith to do this because I literally did not have a safety net. I, I gave up a very lucrative high, high six figure salary for a world of I don't know what's going to happen next or, you know, feast or famine and, you know, the stability of life before and it's uh, different. But it's taught me so many things in terms of, you know, being um, frugal in lean times and, 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 and you know, um, just treasure in every single moment. Uh, I, I enjoy every single production I'm, I'm working on. I enjoy the people that I meet. I am um, blessed and I'm grateful and I'm always – I go in everything that I do with gratitude. Um, and hopefully the universe shifts and, and then, you know, gives me something else to, to do. And so um, I, I, I don't know how I've been so lucky. I just, I just, I'm just so grateful that I've been blessed so far and I'm looking forward to more. <laughs> well, we all bear witness to the cultural phenomenon, which was Black Panther, but you got to play part of it. What did that movie mean to you? Oh my gosh, what does it still mean to me? It's my life. It's my everything. It's a phenomenon. It's been, it was such a huge blessing. Um, and it was something that I, I literally prayed for because, you know, as an African immigrant, Nigerian immigrant, um, there was a lot of stigma growing up in terms of the African continent and people not really necessarily understanding it. Um, and um, just be a mother as well of two young black boys in America and everything that's going on in the, in the world right now, politically, environmentally, social, economically. Um, I just thought I wanted to be involved in a project that spoke volumes. And, and, I, and I just did not even know or imagine that it would be in the form of Black Panther, a Marvel film. Um, and so it has opened so many doors for me so far. I've had opportunities to speak at Harvard, at Wellesley College, at some other um, institutions, uh, you know, and constantly, you know, having that platform. And it's just it's the gift that keeps on giving, and it's really impacted my life personally and professionally. So, uh, yeah, it's just been awesome. I mean, not only was it a beautiful movie, but it had a heavyweight cast, and pound for pound, it was probably the best movie Marvel has done so far. Were you surprised? at its reception at the box office? I mean, it was literally a juggernaut. I, you know, the funny thing is that we, we all knew it was something special because the, the, the detail and the work and the level of research and just the sets were magnificent and everything was so special about it. But we never in our wildest dreams, and when I talk about we, I'm talking about the entire cast, thought it would be a phenomenon that it was. It blew us every away every single day, literally. It was like, are you kidding? Are you, are you really? I mean, it was just, I guess maybe we didn't set high expectations. We just wanted to tell a story and we just wanted to honor a lot and, you know, um, and, and make sure that we, 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 we left some kind of an imprint, um, in this world. And that's the reason why we do, we're actors in the first place. I mean, certainly for me. And, but the fact that it's just carried itself like it has and, just the opportunity to work with all of these wonderful celebrities that were so humble and, and not at all, you know, like divas or anything like that. It was just, it was the best experience I've had to date. And then secondly, it's Venom now. So I, I can't even, I, I can't even believe it, to be honest with you. So did mom get a little bit of street cred with her sons with, now that you're in this uh, the fantastic superhero movie? Yes. Oh my gosh, my my sons are so excited. Um, I, I literally, I mean, when you talk about cool mom, I'm a cool mom. I I, I pray true. for one day that my kids will be would would be proud of me in something, and I got more than that. It was just over and above and beyond um, to the point that their friends as well are so, uh, you know, um, are following me on, on my social media, and I'm an inspiration for them because you know I tell them my story. Um, so I I just love the fact that it's allowed me to it's given me that platform to share my story to people who feel that you know um, they feel hopeless um, sometimes when they're chasing after a dream and they just don't see it happening. I mean, I waited nine years uh, for my big break. I know others have waited even longer, um, but it's just, you just never know when it's going to happen for you and you just have to hang in there. 
Noel, I know there's a stigma attached to superhero films, but the Academy has to recognize this movie, right? I mean, it would be a complete miscarriage of justice if it's not nominated for some Oscars. I, I hope they nominate it because we had some of the best of the best working on set. And, it, you know, even before, you know, when we started filming, everybody from just the the, the female director, um, Rachel P. Morrison, the, cinematogra- the cinematographer who was nominated last year for Mudbound, she worked on this. Um, Ruthie Carter, the costume designer, Hannah Bleacher, you know, the, the um, you know, um, architectural designer. I mean, and then we had makeup. We had incredible, incredible, dedicated people who are at the top of their craft. Um, and so they certainly need to be nominated. Absolutely. Uh, now, if we're nominated as a movie as well, that would be just like the wow. Um, so I know Marvel and, and Disney is really pushing for it. And I and I really hope that this, that, you know, just like we set a standard um, for this film in it being a 90% black cast and, you know, just having this worldwide phenomenon, I hope that the Academy will also kind of like, um, that would resonate with them as well and would set a standard there too. So let's keep our fingers crossed. Well, and it was so perfectly done. The cast was great. The music was great. The setting was great. The hero was amazing. And it was a great story. They took a large swing, a big leap of faith. And I really think it paid off. And I really think that it's going to be a game changer. I think Black Panther changes the game forever. And I wouldn't be surprised if Chadwick's not the face of, you know, the phase four for Marvel going forward. So it's my understanding that... Your adopted hometown of Miami also named a day after you because you were in Black Panther. Yes. Can you imagine? I, I they, had, they gave me a proclamation and I had no idea. I had no idea it was happening. I was just totally invited to go to the commission chambers and the mayor of Miami and the commissioners uh, dedicated April 10th of ni- uh, 2018 as the Chope Aluko Day. And I, I was bawling. <laughs> I could keep it together. I was like, are you freaking kidding me? Um, and I, it was just all the more special because I got to share it with my husband and he was there and he was so proud of me and he's seen how hard it worked all these years. And just and just that happening was just surreal. It really, really was. Okay, well, not get, trying to get you in the hot water with Marvel because you've now booked two Marvel movies in a row, which you have to be ecstatic about, even though it's a Sony picture. It's still Marvel to me. What can you tell us about Venom and your role in it? Okay, so I play the role of Dr. Rosie Collins, and I uh, I work with um, the billionaire um, Dr. Carlton Drake, which is played by Riz Ahmed, um, at the Life Foundation. That I can tell you. And um, the rest you're going to have to see. Oh, friend. Okay, so a few more days. I love how secretive they're being because not all, not even all the roles are filled out on IMDb. Like, Woody Harrelson's there with no name. You know, I, I, I love the fact that they're doing that. What was it like working with Riz Ahmed? He's one of my favorite actors. Oh, my gosh. He's awesome. And I'm, I'm not just saying it, you know, because I, I, he is awesome. He is the sweetest, loveliest person. Um, in fact, I, I, I worked with him. But my scenes were mostly with him and Jenny Slate, who was also super awesome, um, and uh, Michelle Williams and um, Scott Hayes. I mean, they, they, they were just lovely, lovely, lovely. But Riz, oh, my gosh, he was so good. And the fact that he's playing a villain in this is so – you got to see this because he does it so well. He's such a, an incredible actor. Yeah, he had a, a mini series on HBO called, I believe, it was the Night of. That was so good. He uh, he killed it in that. He started off as a as a wimp and a nerd, and then he was just like, "Oh my god, he's a monster!" At the end of it, and and you're gonna see elements of that in this role that he plays, you know, because he he's got some that ooh in there. So it, it's nice how you see that, um, him and Venom go head to head as well. It was so well done. I have to say, I'm. Super excited to be part of two projects, you know, uh, Disney Marvel with Black Panther. It kind of in essentially being the first in, in, in the way it, it carried itself and it's brought to the audience and setting the standard. And I feel the same way about that, it, it being the first um, and giving birth to the first uh, of, you know, the Sony Marvel Universe uh, and such an incredibly talented cast um both on both sides um and, and and you know to me i just love the fact that marvel 
throws everything in there, you know, n- not just about, you know, being true to the comics, which they certainly are, but having that edge of the, 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 the laughter and um, the nice little jokes that you're going to see in there when you do see it. Uh, it's just, it's just very cleverly done. And I, and I just love the science of Marvel and, and what they're doing. It's, it's so well done. Bravo to them. For me, I can't wait to see it. I'm, I'm super excited about it, and I hope it does well in the box office. Where can my listeners find you on social media? Right. I am on uh, Instagram and uh, Facebook as well as Twitter, and my handle is at Shopeyaluko, which is spelled S-O-P-E-A-L-U-K-A-O. Well, folks, you heard it directly from this very talented lady's mouth. It's never too late to follow your dreams. Shopey, come back anytime you want. Thank you so much for, for having me. There. Thank you. Thanks for being here. And that's it for this episode of the Cynic Radio Podcast. We'd like to thank Shape Aluko for coming in and talking about her career with us. We had a great time and will continue to follow. If you haven't gone out and seen it yet, make sure and go see Shape in Venom. We give it a 7.5. You can find the Cynic Radio Podcast at CynicRadio.com. Find us on Twitter at Cynic Radio. On Facebook at Facebook.com slash Cynic Radio. On Instagram at Cynic Radio and wherever your favorite podcasts are hosted. Remember to like, listen, and subscribe, and share with all your family and friends. And until next time, don't get captured. Follow the podcast on Twitter, Facebook, and at CynicRadio.com. Available for download on iTunes. 